We're covering different types of synovial joints and how they move. In previous videos, we organized our joints based on structure. We can organize them based on fibrous joints and fibrous connective tissue or cartilaginous joints because they're either hyaline or fibrous or fibrocartilage. And then lastly, synovial joints because they allow a little bit more movement because there is a space called a joint cavity that has a synovial membrane that produces a synovial fluid. So when we look at synovial joints, we can now organize them in six ways based on how they move. So here's a graphic of the pictures of the arrows and how they might move, but then examples in the body where we find them. So we first look at a gliding, also known as a plane joint, and a plane joint or gliding joint is referring to when you have flat bones that are together, and they can be slightly curved, but they're the same size, so the bones slide together. So the motion of the joint is small, but it's also constrained by the ligaments with them, and because of that, they can be movements in different ways. So you notice I called them monoaxial or uniaxial meaning they only move on one plane, but it depends on the ligaments. In some cases, you can have more than one plane or movement with this type of joint. So as I look at a gliding joint, what I'm describing here is the tarsals. So in between our tarsals or my ankle bones, I have this type of movement. I also find them in between my hands. So when I look at my wrists or my carpals, I see them when I look at the clavicle and the chromium ligament. So a chromioclavicular ligament, they're the same size. So you have that gliding or plane movement on one axis. When I look at a pivot, a pivot joint is also on one axis, una or monoaxial, and it's typically when you have a rounded portion of the bone, so a rounded portion, and it's within a ring that's partially articulated with another bone. And the best example with this is our atlas to our axis, my two first cervical vertebrae, my C1 and C2. So you have this projecting process, and we call that the dense or odontoid process of the axis. And that inner, that articulates with that inner portion of the atlas. And so it's held by a ligament, but it creates that rotation that we've talked about. So when we say we pivot and change course, we're pivoting as we move our head, and that's considered monoaxial. When I look at hinge and we describe hinge, the best example is the elbow joint. So this is the humerus with the ulnar. And when we look at that ulna side connecting to the humerus, what it's doing is you have one bone that's concave and then it's adjoining this bone and it's bending and just creating this one movement. So it's also monoaxial. And this example you'll see is also including with that, that trochlear notch, if you remember trochlear notch of the ulna, and it's going within the trochlea of the humerus. You also see this with the knees and the ankles. So that's a hinge. When I look at saddle joint, now we're moving into something that's moving on two plates. In a saddle joint, I use the example we talk about our thumbs. So when we say we have opposable thumbs, when we talk about the movement's opposition reposition, so in this case, you have the articulation to where you have two bones that fit together, resulting like they're sitting on a saddle, like you're sitting on a horse. And this example we're using is that first carpal to the metacarpal. So you're looking right at the base of the thumb here. So it's ability for the palm to move on two planes with the thumb. So as I look at this, I can have to where I'm going like this or like this. So up back and forth, side to side. So I have two movements, and we talk about this a lot when we talk about grasping things. So when we describe this, it's like you're sitting on the saddle of a horse, that's why it's called a saddle joint. When we get a congular, Congular is another biaxial, meaning on two planes, and congular is also referred to as an ellipsoid joint. Ellipsoid, like you're on elliptical. The elliptical machine and it's concave, what's happening here is you're describing that movement in two different directions. So you have this shallow depression here where one bone is articulating with a rounded structure underneath. And where we see that is in the hand. And as I describe this, we're looking at our carpal bones, and we're looking at the scaphoid 
the lunate and the trichretrum. Remember, so long to pinky, here comes the sum. So, so long to scaphoid, lunate, and trichretrum, where it's articulating that point at the distal end of the radius. And where you see that is where you have the movement and bending and straightening of the fingers. So as I can straighten the fingers. And the second move is I can move side to side. So side to side. And I can expand my fingers like this. But as I expand, go side to side. So as you move your hand in that lateral going direction, medial direction. So this is on a biaxial. And then lastly, a ball and socket is where we have like multiple planes. So we call it triaxial. We think about like my shoulder, my hips are good examples. I'm showing you the connection of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula to where you have a ball in a socket to where it's that shallow portion to where the head sits inside there and it can move anterior, posterior, medial, lateral. So I can move in multiple directions with the ball and socket. So as we're describing all these synovial joints, we're looking at the movements created by how they're connected. And it's increasing the movement because I'm enveloped in a cavity called a synovial cavity. This is the classification of synovial joints.